Hello friends, welcome to Dr. Sai Physiology Academy, DOPA for short. This is the place where we we'll make the learning of physiology easy, exciting and effective. Thank you for joining me. And if you're new to this channel, you're especially welcome. And if you love the content that we share, kindly click the like button and also the subscribe button. Don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't get to miss any new content that will drop. Now let's get started. So today we're going to be dealing with long volumes and capacity. What do we mean by this? Now, anything that you cannot measure, you cannot do what? You cannot improve, you cannot correct, you cannot manage. That's why every system we deal with, we learn in physiology, there's always one measurement or the other, known as physiological variables. So in the respiratory system, it's called long volumes. There are volumes that are measured. We're going to be discussing them, all right? This is, this is very easy stuff, straightforward. So the instrument used in measuring these lung volumes and capacities is known as spirometer. Spirometer. Okay? And the uh, method is called spirometry. Spirometry. Okay, so let's let's go straight into the long volumes and capacities. The volumes are just straightforward definitions of certain volumes in the lung. That's the amount of air that enters the lung based on different stages of breathing. Okay, that's well, then capacity is a combination of different volumes. Okay, so let's when, when we go into it, you understand what I'm talking about. Now we have four volumes, four capacities. Now let's start with this one. There's one called tidal volume. Tidal volume. Okay, what is tidal volume? It's for you to understand very easy logical stuff. It's the volume of air that you take in and take out during normal quiet breathing so you are at rest like this okay you are not exercising you are not sleeping nothing you are just awake breathing in and out quietly the amount of air you take in take out is called tidal volume and for an adult okay these volumes are generally for an adult male okay it's about 500, 500 milliliters tidal volume. So you have another one. It's called inspiratory. Inspiratory reserve volume. Okay? IRV. So what do, what do we mean by inspiratory? From the word reserve. Look at it now. When you have taken in air normally, you've not finished the capacity you have to take in air. After you've taken in the normal air that you breathe in, that you've inspired, you can still breathe in additional. So, what is the maximum that you can take in after this one? The maximum that you take in and you cannot take in again. Just look at it now. I cannot take in more than that. So, what is that volume? So, inspiratory reserve volume is the maximum volume of air that can be inspired over and above the tidal volume. And it is about 3,000 mils. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. You have expiratory logically now expiratory reserve volume or erv for short so it's, it's just the opposite of this after you've breathed out the normal 500 expired there's the additional that you can expire maximally so you can see that this one that you is even smaller the maximum like is actually smaller way smaller than this if you 
<laughs> so you can try it out okay by yourself so that one is about is about 1200 see it's smaller 1200 mils x-ray maximum volume of air that you can expire over and above is tied down then you have the fourth one it's called residual residual volume look at the name residual what is remaining so it means that after you have breathed out maximally that's this arv there is still some amount volume of air that is left in your lungs that you can never breathe out do you understand the purpose is so that those have you like they will not collapse totally there's still some residual air you don't have the capacity to force it out after you forced out all the air in your, with your strength forcefully there's still some that will be small that will still be left that you cannot take out that's what is called residual volume it's around the same this thing 1200 you see that now so these are the four long volumes you see it's very 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 interesting then now let's go to capacities let's put it as number five there are also four of them now you have what is known as inspiratory capacity inspiratory capacity inspiratory result what do we mean by inspiratory capacity you know we say that capacity is their combination of all this so what what do you think we it means inspiratory capacity is the amount of air that you can maximally inspire the maximum volume of air that you can inspire is different from this so this one is maximum that you can inspire after the tidal are you getting it now but this one is the maximum that you can inspire after you have breathed out normally the maximum that you can breathe so you see logically that means it's a combination of this and this talking about inspiration whether it's tidal or not the maximum plus the tidal that means it is 3500 <laughs> you see that now very easy stuff logical then of course you have another one called functional residual capacity functional residual capacity let's let's put their initials this one is ic this one is um, f r c okay so what's functional residual capacity look at it now Res functional residual capacity is the amount of air that is left in the lungs after normal expiration that means you've taken in air you know tidal volume you are taking in 500 taking out 500 so you've taken out the normal 500 what is left after you've taken that that's what this one is talking about so reason it out what do you think it will be it is this and this because this one is maximum that you can expire then this one is what is left but this one is talking of what is left after this so you see how easy it is so it is combination of erv plus rov for this one rov so what do you think it will be 2400 okay 2400 make you don't need to cram anything it's, it's, it's just so straightforward so let's go to the seventh one this one called vital capacity capacity now vital capacity very interesting vital capacity is look at it now the total amount of air that you can inspire hmm? after you have maximally expired are, are, you, are you saying so it's exhausting the whole thing that means you breathe out air like this maximally then you're not taking air again maximally 
you breathe out maximum or you can reverse it is the total amount of air that you can expire maximally after you have maximally taken in air do you see it's don't, don't be confused it's the total that you can maximally take in after you have maximally taken out or is amount that you can maximally take out after you have maximally taken in so it's it's so what do you think it will be look, look at this is the maximum you are taking in then the maximum you are taking out it's erov so use that so it's ic plus erov three five plus one two that will give us four thousand seven hundred Okay, vital capacity VC is equal to 4,700. Once you understand the definition, just reasoning, you can just... So the only thing that you need to cram is just this ones here, which is quite easy. All these ones is just combination of all this. Just understand it. You see that 4,700 news. Then the last but not the least, number eight, is called total long capacity yeah. total long capacity no this one is exhausting everything what what do you think is lacking okay because it has taken this this which we said is this we said this and this that means this 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 so what is left residual volume so total long capacity is the combination of everything is vital capacity plus residual volume vital capacity lacks residual volume it doesn't add residual volume you see that now the total long capacity is this 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 you understand or you can say vital capacity plus this because it lacks this so what do you think it will be 4700 plus one two that's 5900 or you can approximate it to 6000 anyone it varies depending on the text you are reading okay so let's just put here 5900 news so these are its long volumes and capacities and they are known as static long volumes and capacity why because they are recorded after you are done breathing you stop then you, you record it there's another one called dynamic and those ones they are usually very important in diagnostic purposes okay these things are clinical when there's a deviation from all these values you can detect that there's a problem that's why we measure things in physiology so after this break we're going to be dealing with the dynamic and the clinical aspects and some factors that can affect this all right so don't go anywhere after this break Right, you're welcome back. Now, we want to talk about dynamic long volumes. What it just means is that they are measured while the person, the subject, is still breathing. Usually measured during the expiratory phase. Okay, so they measure the the strength of the respiratory muscles and then the patency. Of the respiratory tree all those bronchioles and all of that how patent how open are they you know for example in asthma one of the problems is they, there's what's known as bronchial constriction that means there's constriction of the bronchioles the diameter is now smaller so it will obstruct the flow of air they are known as obstructive lung diseases so you have two types of lung disease you have obstructive obstructive lung diseases and you have restrictive restrictive lung diseases okay so this obstructive lung disease a good example is asthma they usually affect the expiratory phase of breathing why the restrictive they affect the inspiratory phase okay just by the way just take note of that so the, the dynamic long volume that we want to just discuss very important that's a very 
very high diagnostic value. Any respiratory physician, they, they, they perform that. It's known as FEV1. FEV1. What do you mean by FEV1? It means first expiratory volume. Okay, so how do we define FEV1? It is the volume of air that is expired forcefully after you've maximally inspired. You understand? So it is actually the end volume after you've expired everything forcefully is will give you the vital capacity. But look at where why is dynamic. This one here is representing seconds. So when you've maximally taken in air, then you expire it forcefully. So you, the, the instrument will measure how fast you're able to expire it. Now, in normal persons, after one second, okay, in the first second, one second, 80% of vital capacity is expired. Do you understand that? 80% is expired. You know, vital capacity will say is 4,700. Me. So, when you maximize taking air, if nothing is wrong with your respiratory system, in one second, you have expired 80% of this volume, 4,700. Then, in the third second, You've expired 100% of this. So within three seconds, you should be able to expire 4,700. But if you have asthma, obstructive, another obstructive diseases, in the first second, depending on how severe your asthma is, sometimes it can be just 40%. And for asthmatic patients, it can take up to six to seven percent instead of just three seconds. I mean, six to seven seconds for you to maximally expire everything so you see that is diagnostic if within three seconds you've not been able to expire four thousand seven no first of all measure your vital capacity then within three seconds you'll be able to expire it all of them if you are not able then there's a problem you see that now fev1 so that's what what there are others but let's not bother ourselves with called peak expiratory flow rate measures the velocity Okay, but this is mainly used, very, very used. So the, the, there's something called FEV1 over FVC, first vital capacity is the same, just vital capacity, the same thing. So it's just a measure of this, that's how you get this 80%, okay? So you get the volume in first second over the total this thing. You get 80 percent so in asthmatic patients it's about 40 percent 30 percent 50 percent 60 depend on the severity okay then in restrictive lung diseases sometimes it's higher than this um, 80 percent and it's not because it is performing well it's because you know the problem is in inspiration they cannot inspire up to this it's smaller than this you know that this is the denominator so that's why it is higher so don't get confused. It's higher than 80%. It can be asked in MCQ. In restrictive lung disease, the FEV1, FVC ratio is only higher than normal. Or normal, or higher than normal. Doesn't mean it's performing well. It's because this one is smaller than normal. Okay? They cannot take in enough smaller than normal. So that's this what you need to know about lung volumes and capacities. Right? So I'm going to see you in the next video.